Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. This month I am doing two haul videos. I have my normal vlog style haul that I typically do and you'll be getting that at the end of the month, but I also went to New York Comic Con and I came back with so many books that I have decided, you know what, we're just gonna do a dedicated <laughs> New York Comic Con book haul. And I'm going to show you all of the things that I picked up. Caveat that this is the books that I picked up for myself. There were also some books for my kids that I'm not going to include here because I would have to go round them up and I'm not sure where all of them are at the moment because they've been reading them. But I have a whole bunch of books. Three of these are books that I actually paid for myself and the rest were giveaways. There's a lot of advanced copies of books coming out in 2023, which is very exciting. There are some already released books that we got copies of and just generally a lot of things I'm really excited about. Little known fact for those of you missing BookCon, New York Comic Con is actually pretty great for books. This year most of the publishers were back. They've been gone because of COVID and then last year they weren't really there. But this year they were back with their booths and there's a lot of giveaways and a lot of great books available. A lot of amazing authors I got to meet. So if you're interested in seeing more content about my experience at New York Comic Con, I will have a vlog coming so keep an eye out for that. I got to meet some amazing people. I did some really cool stuff. Um, so that'll be coming today. We're just going to talk about the books that I picked up. Yeah, I think that's it. So we're going to go by day. I will show you the books that I picked up each day of the convention. The fewest books is from the last day of the convention because I went with my eight year old. And so that day was mostly dedicated to whatever he wanted to do and less to me getting all of the books that I wanted. So let's go ahead and start with all of the books I picked up on Thursday. On Thursday I picked up seven books and I purchased one of them. The book that I bought for myself is Bloodline by Claudia Gray. This is in the Star Wars universe. It's a story about Leia and I've heard really good things about it. I have been interested in trying the Star Wars books because I love Star Wars but it, it feels a little bit daunting because there are so many books so I've gotten some good recommendations on different places to start and I'm thinking maybe in 2023 it might be the year that I pick pick a handful of books and perhaps do a project where I try to get into some of the Star Wars books and see how it goes. And this is definitely top of my list. So I picked up a copy of Bloodline. Then I picked up two finished books that they were doing as giveaways. They had this kind of cool special convention edition of Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett, which I really enjoyed. I didn't get on as well with the later books in the series, but I really liked the first one a lot. And I thought this was kind of a cool little special edition, so I picked that up. And then I have a signed copy of The Desert Prince by Peter V. Brett. He is super nice. He signed it and signed a book plate. He is definitely an author that I have been meaning to read for a long time and this looks great. It's the first book in an epic fantasy adventure set in the same world as his Demon Cycle series. I'm always a fan of epic fantasy. The cover looks fun. We've got a badass girl on the cover looks good. Lastly for Thursday I got four advanced copies of book and for these I will go in order of publication date. First is one where we got advanced copies but the book is actually already out. It came out in August. This is The Art of Prophecy book one by Wesley Chu. So this is a mix of high fantasy and wuxia with martial arts stuff that sounded interesting. It is another one where I was able to get it signed and meet Wesley Chu. He was really nice and I, I love the cover. It sounds fun. He is an author I've been meaning to pick up at some point and this seemed like a great opportunity. Then I have two February 2023 releases. First up is Radiant Sin by Katie Robert. I really enjoy her. This is in the Dark Olympus series that Neon Gods began. She writes steamy romance. I'm excited for this. And I got to meet her, got it signed, and she was really, really lovely. The entire series is loosely inspired by Greek myths, and this is Cassandra and Apollo. Very loosely inspired. Mostly contemporary steamy romance, but loosely inspired. Also coming out in February is Nightbirds by Kate Armstrong. I love this cover. It's so beautiful. And I've heard really good things about this. I'm excited to check it out. It is YA. It says, in this dazzling new fantasy, women wielding the most powerful magic ever known emerge from the shadows to change their fates. 
The nightbirds are Simta's best kept secret. These privileged girls have a rare and potent magic they can gift to someone with just a kiss. But magic, especially the magic of women, is outlawed and the city's religious sects would see them burned if discovered. Anyway, it sounds really interesting. I'm excited to pick it up and it comes out in February. The final book from Thursday is a March release. This is The Strange by Nathan Bellingrid and it sounds really interesting. I've never read from this author before but the publicist said she really liked it and it's I'm intrigued. It says it says 1931 New Galveston Mars 14 year old Annabelle Crisp sets off through the wastelands of the strange to find Silas Munt's gang who have stolen her mother's voice destroyed her father and left her solely with a need for vengeance. So it's interesting because it's like a sci-fi western set on Mars and it's not super long. I'm interested. Moving on to Friday, this was a big day. I ended up with eight books, one of which I purchased, and a couple of my most anticipated reads forthcoming. So this was a really exciting one. The book that I decided to purchase was The Last Watch by J.S. Dews. They were running a special at the tour booth and this is one that had been on my radar. I didn't read it when it first came out earlier this year but since then I've had some people recommend it to me as a space opera by a woman that is supposedly pretty good. They're calling it The Expanse meets Game of Thrones in a fast-paced sci-fi adventure where a handful of soldiers stand between humanity and annihilation really interested in reading this one. Again, people have been saying good things, so I decided to pick up a copy. All the rest were advanced copies of books that are not yet out. First up, coming out in November, is a graphic novel about the life of Albert Einstein. This looked really interesting. I like nonfiction graphic novels, and it, it sounded kind of cool. This was a New York Comic Con exclusive galley. Also coming out in November is a book that I have pre-ordered, but when I saw that ARCs were available from one of my favorite authors, Getting Signed, obviously I needed one. This is The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. I love Susan Dennard. I'm obsessed with the Witchland series. I love Susan, and this is a book in a different series that I am excited to read. It comes out in November. She signed it, and I cannot wait to read this one. Hunt or Be Hunted choose wisely. Hemlock Falls isn't like other towns. You won't find it on a map. Your phone won't work here and the forest outside town might just kill you. Only the Luminaries, a society of ancient guardians, stand between humanity and the nightmares of the forest that rise each night. Anyway, it sounds fantastic. I am so excited to read it. Coming out in February, we have The Spite House by Johnny Compton. This sounds amazing. It's coming out from Tor Nightfire, and I had not heard of it before, but I'm tempted to read it this year as part of Black Oweenathon because it would be like right on target for that. So this is a gothic horror novel written by a Black author author and it says it's a terrifying gothic thriller about grief, depth, and the depths of a father's love. A stunning debut by a horror master in the making. It's set in Texas and it looks incredible. Then for another book I'm very excited for and do in fact have pre-ordered, but the author was there signing ARCs, um, we have Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. I love Stephen Graham Jones. He is an indigenous horror author who's incredible. This is the sequel to a book that I really really loved the year it came out and I'm so excited for it. It's coming out in February. And he signed it. And also I love the note. He said, Bethany, thanks for hanging with Jade. She needs friends. <laughs> Which is, is accurate. Note the, uh, the chainsaw stamp at the top. I love it and so excited to have this. Coming out in March is The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. I'm really intrigued by this. It's the first in a new series that she is writing. I read her debut novel and had mixed feelings about it. There were things I loved about it, things that didn't totally work for me, but I'm really interested to read something else from her now that she's got a couple books under her belt. She finished that series and now is starting a new one, and this is a fantasy romance of some sort. Introducing your new obsession, Death Holds the City. She holds death. Intriguing. Lastly are two April releases, one of which I actually have an ebook copy on NetGalley and so I'm excited to have a physical copy to read. This is Blood Debts by Terry J. Benton Walker and I am very excited about this. I'm actually going to pop up the finished cover because it's not on here but it's a gorgeous cover. It says, Justice will reign in a deadly tale of sacrifice and betrayal in magical modern-day New Orleans. 
30 years after the greatest magical massacre in their city's history, the rightful heirs of a stolen throne set out to right the wrongs in their family's past and bring about the justice they're owed. This looks absolutely stunning. I think it's a debut and I'm very excited to pick it up. The last book that I picked up on Friday and like this was by far my biggest day in terms of books. There's a lot less to come in future days, but I got Some Desperate Glory by Emily Tesh. This is going on sale in April and all of the tour publicists seem very excited about it, so maybe one to keep your eye on. This is a queer adult sci-fi novel that they're calling sort of new adulty maybe. Um, While we live, the enemy shall fear us. Since she was born, Kier has trained for the day she can avenge the murder of planet Earth. Raised in the bowels of Gaia Station alongside the last scraps of humanity, Kier is one of the best warriors of her generation. When Command assigns her brother to certain death and relegates her to nursery to bear sons until she dies trying, she knows she must take humanity's revenge into her own hands. I mean, it sounds really good. People seem excited for it. I'm looking forward to trying it. Next is the books from Saturday. There were four of them and I did not purchase any. First up for one I've read, they're celebrating the 20th anniversary of Aragon by Christopher Paolini and we're giving away these nice paperback copies of it. It makes me feel old that <laughs> this came out 20 years ago, but um, I thought that this might be nice to have for my kids as they're getting a little bit older. Y you know, like this is not the height of fantasy, but you know, it was fun for what it was and maybe the kids would enjoy it. From Quirk Books, we have Dare to Know by James Kennedy. This is kind of interesting. I hadn't heard of it before, but they were doing a giveaway for it. What if you learned the exact moment of your death and it had already happened? Our narrator is the most talented salesperson at Dare to Know, an enigmatic company that has developed the technology to predict anyone's death down to the second. Their one rule, salespeople can never look up their own death dates. Our narrator has never been tempted before, but after a string of failures, a single crisis pushes him over the edge. The problem, his prediction says he died 23 minutes ago. <laughs> So a uh, really interesting premise and one that I'm curious about. Coming out in March is a novella that I also have a neck alley arc for, so yay for physical arcs. This is The Mimicking of Known Successes by Malka Older, and it sounds excellent. It's like a queer sci-fi western mystery from what I understand. It's set on a colony in Jupiter where a man goes missing and there's an investigator trying to trail him and figure out what happened and there's, you know, high stakes. It looks really fun. It's sapphic. And fun fact, I was curious when I saw her name, but it turns out Malka Older is the sister to Daniel Jose Older, who is also a phenomenal author. And finally coming out in April 2023 is That Self Same Metal by Brittany N. Williams. This has a stunning cover. It's coming out from Abrams Books. They're the same folks that published Jordan E. Fuego's duology, and this looks great. A stunning new YA fantasy series perfect for fans of Holly Black and Justina Ireland about a black sword expert fighting a fae uprising in Shakespearean London. I mean, it sounds great, right? It sounds great. Finally, we come to Sunday. For Sunday, I've got two books, one of which I purchased, and the other one was an advanced copy that I was very excited to get that came with that purchase. They were doing 50% off books at the tour booth, so I was like, you know what? Let me pick up a copy of a book that I love and keep mentioning because I would like one on my shelves. This is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I read this as a ebook from Neck Alley before it came out. I loved it. I gave it five stars. I think this is a great horror novella, especially for fans of Mexican Gothic, and I am really happy to have a physical copy on my shelves. It's actually like a really pretty book too. It's illustrated and yeah, it, yay. It was, it was half off. So I was like $10. Yes, yes, I will do that. The very last book that I picked up at New York Comic Con this year is an arc of a novella that is coming out in February of 2023. This is Arch Conspirator by Veronica Roth. Veronica Roth has been slowly moving into writing for adults and I've really enjoyed some of her later stuff. I think she's trying to reinvent herself and I'm very curious to read this novella because the premise sounds great. Arch Conspirator is a sci-fi retelling of Antigone. Yes. The, the Greek play. So that sounds amazing and I'm very excited to see what she does with it. 
Oh, okay, there you go. Those are the 21 books that I picked up at New York Comic Con. That is a lot. Like, is that going to destroy my TBR plans? Maybe, maybe. At least I've read a few of them. Most of them are things I haven't read, but some very exciting books. And I would love to hear from you in the comments down below, which of these are you most interested in seeing me review? Like if I was going to prioritize some things, I do tend to do things mostly in publication order, but sometimes I'll move things around. So if there are some things you particularly would be interested to see me review, let me know what those are in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.